Mr. Fries Schneider, Chair of Global Agenda for Sustainable Livestock. Dr. Jimmy Smith, Director General of International Livestock Research Institute. Dr. Ryan Wang, Assistant Director General of FAO. Excellences, all protocol observers, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a great pleasure and honor for me to give an opening remark on this important international conference aimed at achieving multiple benefits through livestock-based solutions. On behalf of the government of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and that of my own, please allow me to welcome you all to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, the land of origin. <laughs> Ethiopia is happy in hosting the seventh multi-stakeholder partnership meeting of the Global Agenda for Sustainable Livestock, as this would enable us to share the multiple benefits we are driving from sustainable livestock initiatives, presently supported by the Ethiopian Livestock Master. The Climate Resilient Green Economy Initiative, commissioned by the Ethiopian government in view of protecting the country from the adverse effects of climate change, will benefit the livestock sector as this sector is the first victim of such negative impacts of climate change. Excellencies, distinguished participants, with the global population expected to continue to rise until about 2050 and then stabilized at around 9 or 10 billion, it is estimated that food production will need to increase by as much as 70%. The challenge of feeding a growing population remains formidable but attainable with implementation of climate resilient green economy. The Ethiopian government has laid the institutional and analytical basis for the sector with the creation of the new Ministry of Livestock and the Fisheries in October 2015 and the Livestock Master Plan based on the rigorous livestock sector analysis. This is a major milestone for the livestock and the fisheries sector as it signals the government of Ethiopia's commitment to the modernization and the transformation of the sector. Agriculture is the main source of livelihood for over 85% of the rural community of Ethiopia. The government of Ethiopia has given major emphasis to increase agricultural production and productivity. We are also determined to remove constraints that impede sustainable agriculture and rural development. Some of the measures initiated to support agricultural production include the provision of quality farming foods at affordable prices, small-scale irrigation schemes, minimized cost harvest losses, and the control and eradication of major livestock and human disease. Breed improvement, production of adequate livestock feed, and the provision of health services are among the major key factors to promote livestock production in the country and were given prior attention. Excellencies and distinguished participants, my government has taken important and ambitious steps to efficiently utilize its vast wealth of livestock resources and make this sector one of the drivers of the transformation of agricultural based economy. Through improved productivity, boosting export oriented business, and generating foreign currency. This is mainly backed by the second growth and transmission plan of the country, which envisages rapidity, continuity, and equitability of economic growth. Poverty reduction and food security improvement are the main challenges in Ethiopia and the continent of Africa and other parts of the developing world. Direct and indirect, in, indirect impact on the fight against hunger and poverty, livestock is incre increasingly recognized to have a significant potential to contribute to overall economic growth, poverty reduction, and food and nutrition security. Livestock plays multiple roles in the livelihood of the people, impacting in many ways on food and nutrition security, economic well-being, social status, environmental sustainability, and people's health. Livestock plays an important role in my country, not only because we are the major livestock country in Africa, both in terms of number and diversity, diversity of livestock, but our agriculture depends on livestock and the climate change reduces 
the availability and the productivity of useful resources used to improve livestock production and productivity. That's why such a multi-stakeholder partnership forum is not only essential, but timely in our case. Excellencies and distinguished participants, my country with approximately 80% of its population of above 98 million dwelling in rural areas is profoundly an agrarian nation. Agriculture accounts for 46% of the national GDP, 90% of foreign exchange earnings, and 85% of employment. This livestock sector has been contributing considerable portion to the economy of the country and is still promising to rally around the economic development of the country. Livestock generates for 2% of the agricultural GDP and 60-20% of the national GDP. Last year, my country has faced an unprecedented level of drought in the eastern and southern part of the pastoral areas, which is the worst of its kind in 15 years. However, the impact of the drought was averted without causing serious damage against the public, mainly due to preparedness, the prompt and the concerted action of the government and the development partners. Drought resilience initiatives have been instrumental with a special emphasis on water resource development for human livestock use. Irrigated pasture, fodder bank and horticulture crops along with improved livestock as boundary and the market access would contribute to the climate resilient green economy agenda. In the highlands and the mid altitude areas, establishment of integrated agro-industrial parks with the aim of market creation and the value addition to agriculture and livestock products is envisaged to catalyze sustainable development and social economic transformation. In 2015, the African Union launched the Livestock Development Strategy for Africa to guide livestock development into the future. Capacity development and gender mainstreaming are important components in the development agenda, particularly in job creation for key actors in the current and the future livestock agriculture, particularly women and the youth. The livestock sector is particularly relevant in this context, given that traditionally women play a significant role in raising animals as well as processing and selling livestock commodities. For the youth, the transfer of livestock commodity value chains offers new opportunities. The mission of the global agenda is to enhance livestock stakeholders' commitment and investment in support of the UN Agenda 2030 by facilitating dialogue, creating evidence and supporting the adoption of good practices and policies. The global agenda functions in an open and consensual way as a multi-stakeholder partnership that actively engages all actors in the livestock sector worldwide. Governments, civil society, private actors, donors, academia, non-governmental organizations and multilateral organizations to foster the sustainable development of the rapidly changing livestock sector. Excellencies, distinguished participants. At the same time, Ethiopia is keen to learn from others' knowledge and experiences and hopes this meeting will enhance our capacity to practice sustainable livestock to reduce poverty and increase food security. With this brief remark, I thank once again the organizers for organizing this international convention and all the participants who have come here today to participate and contribute to the meeting objectives. Wishing you a fruitful deliberation, I announce the seventh multi-stakeholder partnership conference of the Global Agenda for Stable Livestock officially open. I thank you.